cast. I mean, you literally have, you, you've got like the pick of the litter for every actor in every role. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, I think it was a combination of things. You know, one was, uh, you know, Jessica helped out with Isabella Pear because she had met her in Cannes. Um, my casting director had relationships with Kieran Hines. Uh, he had relationships with Bill Hader and, and, you know, went to him. She reached out to Viola Davis and got her the script. You know, Viola and Jessica had worked together as a help. Uh, you know, Jess Weitzler was one of Jess, best friends. You know, best friend and a, a friend of mine. So, you know, it was, uh, it was just this, you know, real luck of the draw, but sort of like a nice synchronicity in the way, way that things came. Emma, what in him and her is missing from them that you would try to talk someone into seeing all three films? Well, I think him and her expand from them. Him and her create two very subjective viewpoints of the same relationship. So you, in the same time period that them takes place, you go off with, into Connor's life a bit more and experience the characters in his life, like his father played by Kieran Hines, mm -hmm. or the character played by Bill Hader, or the character played by Nina Arianda, Alexis in the bar. It's like those characters have their own arcs and their own development and sort of breed into their own stories because they're centric to his version of events. So there's an expansion that way. The same thing goes for her film, um, which, you know, William Hurd's character, Isabella Pear's character, Jess Weixler's character, these things expand a bit more and you sort of see where she goes off to. Whereas this them version focuses much more on the two of them and the ways that they come together and break apart. I think some people perceive the film as a relationship film about two people in love and it breaking apart, kind of something monumental happens. Um, when you wrote the stories, how much of research did you do about uh, people losing children? I did a lot of research and I had also some personal experience with it and some personal connections to it so it was just something that um, it was just something that you know I when I confronted at the time uh, and I'm not going to delve into it too much but you know we're all sometimes equipped to deal with something and sometimes not and sometimes we deal with it in the right way even if we are equipped and sometimes we deal with it in the wrong way you know if we are too so it, it's just Grief is such an interesting thing, and coping is such an interesting thing, because I think we all deal in such different ways, and that was the thing that really interested me. I think watching how people danced around each other, how people, you know, behave in a circumstance when you are confronting uh, something difficult, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that monumental loss is very specific, but you know there. Are, are certainly other instances in life that you know people deal with in different ways. So I, I use that as sort of life inserting itself in you know inserting itself in this unforeseen way into this relationship and what that did to these people, what that did to that this love, and and how how does love endure in those cases, and how does love endure in general? Mm -hmm. You know, because ultimately we always start off sort of euphoric, wonderful moments where everything seems easy and you're in the sort of dopamine high of the beginning. But to me, love is sort of more in the middle and the end when you sort of know how to live with each other and, you know, you're in this partnership or, you know, you look back at your life and say, you know, or look back at the scale of the experiences you've had together and it's, it's never easy, you know. The easy times are... Five seconds after you. Exactly. And they come and go, and they're here and there, and, and joy is a beautiful thing, but I think we're all searching for those moments of joy, and, and, and it can't be joy every day, because then it wouldn't be joy. It's just, there would be no dynamics. You need the good with the bad, and, you know, I wanted to show two people going through something difficult, because I think we, you know, I graduated into 9-11, and I just remember, like, not knowing how to handle that, like, because I had friends in that building and, you know, that I grew up with, and, and, and I, I, you know, I don't know, like, the world that we live in is really hard. I think we live in a very sheltered country, you know.
have sometimes where we're not willing to, we don't realize how easy it can be. And, and Or, you know, especially in like urban areas that are, are, are more well to do, where, where, you know, you, you look at, I feel very privileged that I get to wake up every day and, and write and make movies for a living. You know, that's like winning the lottery, you know, like that's, that's luck beyond luck. So, but I, I just feel like it's, it's a, we live in times where sometimes it's hard to look at really difficult things and I wanted to show people or at least examine them myself if that makes sense. Uh, what about the way that you wrote it? How did you capture, how would you say you captured this kind of slow motion suffering? And I feel like they're both experiencing and kind of colliding over and over with the people that they love and that love them. Um, I, I don't know that I consciously knew exactly what I was doing. It just felt um, it just felt like I wanted to sort of let behavior dictate the story and, and sort of try and show two very honest but different versions of, of how people were handling something and how all the people around them were handling the same situation. Um, so, you know, to me, the thing that was really interesting me, to me was, was how the actors would tell the story. And I was lucky enough just to have this amazing group of actors who mm -hmm. could handle something like this, you know, without... I think a lot of it, to me, is about the unspoken. Mm -hmm. I think, you know... They're watching each other, the actors are watching each other so well. Yes, yeah, so. definitely. And it's about that sort of quiet understanding and the silent understanding as opposed to... And misunderstandings. Yeah, and misunderstandings. And, and, and I think when there is a situation such as the one that they go through, I think everybody tries to figure out how to talk about it or not talk about it or behave... Try to bring it up when no one wants to talk exactly. about it. Exactly. Either try to bring it up or don't, you know, sometimes... I you know, respect where they are. Exactly. Which is really tough too. It's it's really difficult and I think sometimes it's funny because some people want to talk about it and some people don't want to some people just want to run away from it. And you really yeah. dealt with that. You so really dealt with that in the film. I sort of wanted to show all the different types of behavior. And you know, even in like the the Isabel Pear character, I, I didn't She drinks the whole time. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, it's like it's it's a it's a you know it's, it's an, 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 yeah it's an anesthetizer, but it's not she's a drunk. It's just there to sort of like keep her in line. But there's that line she has about like I never wanted to be a mother, and what I what was important in that line about me is that she's saying I never wanted to feel these things. You know, like having to go through this sucks. You know, feeling these things is horrible because you don't expect that when you start in life, or when you have a child, or when you get in a relationship, that you just can never foresee what's gonna happen when things don't live up to your expectations of what life, the life that you wanted to have, or the life you, know, the life you wanted to, to be in, isn't there, it's, that's hard. And I think every human being goes through that. You know, we all like, start with expectations. Eventually, we haven't yet, we will. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, my expectations coming out of college professionally were like, I was going to run out of college and make a movie. I, I didn't start writing this movie until I was 27, after making a few shorts. I'm 37 now, that's my first film. That, that's not the time frame that I expected, but at the end of the day, I'm really grateful that I got to make this film with these people. And, you know, it was worth it. I got to learn a ton. You know, so. And that's the same lesson as the, as the film as well, which is that you have to just take how it works and, and try to find the joy inside of that, exactly. because that's all we have. Exactly. When Jessica Chastain's character says, um, you know, I want things like they were, I wanna, which is, I, I, I so relate to that, and I think everybody relates to that, but in terms of monumental loss, for people to wish that they could just bring things back, but what changes you in a really dark experience makes you better, and hopefully the end of the film which we won't spoil, but the end of the film does kind of give a little bit of light to that, uh, some hope. I think, I, I don't want people to think that this is an only, only a sad film, because there's a lot of hope in it. No, it's, it's supposed to be very hopeful, and in her, there's a different ending, and you know, with him, it's, you know, it's, so those endings are even more literal, and you know, even more hopeful.
Oh, right? cool. So, you know, I think I wanted to show different endings uh, just to show the different sides of what was possible uh, and the different ideas I was playing with. Because the, in the ending of them for me is, is more metaphorical than it is literal. Uh -huh. You know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make clear that, you know, these people were going to be following each other, you know, throughout their entire lives, whether, whether they're together or not. It's open to interpretation whether they get back together or not, but in my mind, I'm hopeful. Right. Uh, do, you, do you think there is more of her or him that wound up in the last one? In, in the yeah. one then? I think it's a little bit more her-centric, um, but, you know, I think because it's just the way the themes that we were playing with seemed, seemed to work itself into the rhythm of this third film that we were editing. So, um, but it's it's pretty evenly balanced, uh, or pretty close to evenly balanced. But uh, I just found with the scenes overlapping, you know, it just sort of led me into creating this rhythm, sort of focused on her interior process and her, you know, her as this one who disappeared and erased her own identity and him chasing after that identity. So those sort of two ideas exist in these separate films, but when I synthesize them, it sort of was showing this disparate visual dialogue between the two of them in the moments that they came back together and how they each sort of experienced them so differently. And in reference to disappearance, um, I have a, I believe, that you cannot feel presence and absence at the same time. And I think that you're, I don't know if you caught, if you intentionally did this, but the idea of her disappearance, uh, that it's about um, feeling loss and um, not being able to be present. And then the fact that you have these flashbacks kind of brings back the idea that it never goes away, that that loss never goes away, that, that, that you, you have to deal with it in order to move forward. Yeah. I, I love the symbolic aspect of the name of the film. Um, how much were you playing with presence and absence? Well, I was definitely playing with this idea of like you can't forget what you want to forget. It's just one of those things. The more you try, yeah. the worse it gets. I mean, and I think she's trying so hard to forget herself, forget her life, and she cuts her hair, she changes herself, and that's why she has problems looking in the mirror, and you know, that's why she sort of could see him because he was just this constant reminder. So I think, you know, by creating this absence from her former life, as much as she wanted to, she keeps on smashing into it at moments, you know, without being able to help it. Even in, like, the thing of taking the picture down, you know? Like, that empty space is still on the wall. Mm -hmm. That absence is actually a presence. You yeah, know? So absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. So, you know, and that, you know, that's, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a theme throughout all of the films. What do you think was the most difficult emotional moment in the film to write? With authenticity, where did you get trapped? Where did you get gone? I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to get better as a writer. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's. There are a lot of tricky moments, but I think it was always with the actors that I think I'd find the authenticity because they were so good. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, the one I was at least the most emotionally poignant scene is sort of that catharsis scene at the end of the film in their apartment, which we shot two different versions of. Because yeah. they're in him and her, there are four overlapping scenes that exist in them, but there are different perspectives of each of those scenes in these other movies. Mm -hmm. um, so that could, you can sort of tell that when you're watching it in them. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so that was kind of amazing because I was terrified of, of sort of like how those scenes were going to be so subtly different and we did that in color palette and we did that in camera right. rhythm and production design and costume design but also the act, working with the actors in terms of creating different intentions for each of those things and you're having an actor like Jessica or James not only play the character they're playing but they're playing a perception of the character they're playing too so they're playing two, two. characters yeah. which is really tricky and also to find emotional truth with the moments is really tricky as well. So um, that scene, I just didn't know, but we shot it sort of like a couple weeks into shooting, and I just, I just, 
once you Thank God, I saw it work. You know, I was like, wow. I was like, God, these guys are amazing. They are. You know, and uh, that was a, a long night because we shot until dawn. Like, and I remember, like, the sun was coming up and it was going to sort of ruin that, you know, so we had to like, racing to get these last moments. And, you know, I had to shoot that scene two different ways twice, and, you know, they were up to the challenge. So that was a long, that was a long, like, two days, but they, they, they really helped me. They were great collaborators, and I think they made my writing better than it actually is. So. A great actor, that's what they do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can you talk a little bit about production design and um, photography and the palette? Because you were very specific about how to differentiate different perspectives and you still brought that into them. Yeah, I, I mean, in creating him and her, uh, I created these very different and disparate palettes and, and camera rhythms and visual rhythms. So, you know, in his film, it's much cooler and detached, and he's, you know, the camera's moving a lot more in terms of its fluidity. And, because he's a character that needs to keep moving, otherwise he's going to stop and feel something. Mm -hmm. So I wanted that to be echoed within all of his film. And then in her film, it was a warmer, you know, I think she, that she's in a much more interior space than he is. And, and uh, uh, I, I sort of had a, a looser camera with a much more handheld to sort of feel the emotional tenor of where she is. Um, and, uh, you know, same within the design of the production or in the costumes as well. So I just wanted those things to reflect the characters themselves within each space of each film. Um, and ultimately in creating the third film, I was able to use those disparate ideas at the beginning because they're separate at that point and then ultimately synthesize them. And the, 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 with the wonders of you know technology, you can, Go into color time, or, or, you know, a digital, you know, digital intermediate, and, and and you know, blend those color palettes to sort of show the synthesis and understanding that these two people find together. So um, I definitely was able to use them in, in, in all in an emotional way. Yeah, in an emotional way. That's you know, if you really look for it, you'll see it. But you know, I didn't want it to be oh so noticeable, but just noticeable. Are you planning on uh, being a director that usually writes his own work? Yeah, I would like that. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the way I like to work right now. Um, you, you know, even if I was adapting something, I don't want to, I want to write it. But, uh, you know, I think the next thing I'm working on is, is written by myself is for a director. You know, I, I write and adapt books you know, to pay the rent. Right. Because so, <laughs> uh, indie film is also lucrative. But, uh, well, maybe. Fingers Maybe. crossed. Not on this one. So. Well, I'll let them know that. Well, it could happen. Yeah. I, I, I hope the best for him because uh, I really I love it. It's a very important film. Well, thank you thank so much for coming. Absolutely. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. luck with the film. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. So that will be coming out for sure, for sure. But if you can dig up or find October um, 10th. Uh, okay, October 10th. If you can, uh, but maybe, maybe somebody will be, um, maybe Oscar talk will get some pe more people watching the film. And if that's the case, then check out uh, him and her as well because they're all very important and, and speak to your own aesthetic as a director. And he's someone to keep in mind. So thank you so much. Thank you.